Hello everyone, welcome to this Panko webinar. My name is Wendy from the Kenyan chapter and I will be your host. Um, I hope that everyone is well and you're excited for this presentation as I am. Today's speaker is Asia Richo. She's the founder of Evolving Women, an organization that aims to train women from developing countries to work in the hospitality industry. It is a pleasure to have her speak to us about how she has impacted over 5,000 lives through her organization. Just a side note, Q&A will be done through the chat feature after the presentation and we'll ask questions that you have on the topic. And to those joining us for the first time, Spango is an all-girls organization, is an all-girls global student organization where proceeds go to charity and we are being crowdfunded via ifundwomen.com. Any contribution made will be highly appreciated. And now the floor is yours, Asia. Welcome. Uh, hi, everyone. I hope you are all well. Um, I'm taking this call from home due to COVID. Uh, so I'm gonna put my camera on. You might hear my dog barking from time to time. But uh, due to COVID, we have to, uh, we have to work from home. There we go. Um, so um, yes, yeah, so my name is Asi Riccio and I'm the founder of uh, an impact organization called Evolving Women. We are based in Dubai and we work in, um, in Africa. So at the moment we have uh, projects ongoing in, in Ghana, uh, Zambia, Rwanda, and uh, South Africa. And we're planning to expand into Ethiopia over the next few months. Um, so we, uh, we started in 2017, beginning of 2017, and uh, uh, the plan was to work with um, unemployed women who have had uh, very limited access to education, job opportunities, and really help them uh, um, access um, employability skill training, um, a study abroad program where they could work and at the same time access education. So the first project was uh, launched in Ghana. Uh, we trained um, a, a group of 10 ladies and one of them um, uh, came to Dubai. Uh, she was with us for about 18 months before uh, uh, returning to a full-time job in, uh, in Accra. So I'm going to start sharing with you now uh, a presentation. And uh, of course, you know, at the end of, uh, of uh, this session, you can ask as many questions as, as you want. So just give me one second. There we go. Can you all see? I hope you can all see this, um, this slide. Um, so let me just give you a little bit of uh, uh, background, really. So um, I, I started traveling in Africa uh, in 2016, and uh, throughout my, my journey, um, I, I met so many women, um, like Savia, who were uh, either... Uh, um, uh, women who had um, sort of ha they have had uh, some personal challenges, whether that was because of uh, becoming single mothers at a very young age, when of course teen pregnancy was a taboo, um, or uh, had financial problems that uh, didn't allow them to access education. So um, I really wanted to uh, uh, create a program or uh, an intervention, how we call it nowadays, where uh, women like Savior could uh, really uplift their lives. And that drive really came from uh, uh, my personal background, my, the way uh, I was raised. My mom herself was, uh, um, uh, was taken out of education at the age of nine. So she raised us, she, she raised her children really believing that all girls or young girls need to, to go to school. So there was a personal drive, there was a personal motivation, and then of course there was this personal experience that I was having in, uh, in, uh, in Africa uh, while I was traveling. So Evolving Women was really born to, to change this story, to change the story of, of Savior, like the story of many other women from Rwanda, Zambia, South Africa, and so on. So what do we do exactly? So we, as I said, we provide uh, an, um, 
uh, unemployed women with, with the study abroad program. Um, they they come to the UAE for uh, two years and uh, throughout these two years. Sorry, can you just give me one second? Um, so, yes, so they, they, they come to the EU for two years, um, they go through a selection process, and we, we're going to talk about this in a second, uh, but essentially, yes, they, they, they come to the UAE for two years, they work in, uh, in hotels, and uh, where they are able to develop professional skills, um, technical skills, they, uh, we have several partnerships with the university and education facilities here in Dubai, uh, where they train on a monthly basis, they have access to online education, they have their own mentor, and the whole program is really aimed at uh, following them on a monthly basis and uh, addressing challenges they're having and at the same time preparing a training plan, a development plan that would allow them to set goals and move from A to B and then of course to, to C and so on. Um, and the ultimate object, objective really of the program is for them to be able to go back home, have a full time job and bring their skills back to their communities. So, of course, they've been exposed to uh, uh, international standards, they've been exposed to uh, um, uh, a different career path, and therefore we want them to bring this knowledge back, back home. But I just want to take you more into details in, uh, in how we structure this intervention. So we are looking at uh, um, uh, a 24 months program in Dubai that is uh, um, um, that starts with the three months preparation training in the Rome country. Um, the, 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 the three months in the Rome country is when we go through uh, um, a selection process. Uh, so the selection process includes, of course, an application. Uh, they need to submit an application that uh, our team reviews, and then uh, we will meet them face to face for a five day training. During the, the five-day training, we, uh, um, we uh, train them on interview skills, so we provide them an orientation of the, the, the UAE as, as a country uh, based on, of course, you know, we, we explain them the labor law, we explain them the contract they're going to have, uh, um, the do's and don'ts um, in, in the UAE. These are women who have never left their country. Many of them have never had a passport before. So the five days really aim, is aimed at um, um, preparing them to start this new adventure. Um, the interview skill training that we, um, uh, we provide is to prepare them really to uh, interview with uh, international hospitality groups. Uh, we work with Hilton, Accor, Radisson, uh, Ramada, amongst others. So we really want them to prepare to sit down for an interview and uh, um, uh, really been able to secure a job with, with these high level standards hotels. The moment they secure a job and they receive a contract, they receive a work visa, then they're allowed to leave uh, the country. So this process takes around three months and uh, we, we really dedicate, uh, um, we, we, we put a huge amount of effort in these three months because we want them to be ready to leave the country. The moment they come to the UAE, then, as I said before, they have access to uh, lots of different activities, online training, face-to-face -face training, and the latest uh, addition, addition to um, our program is an incubator for entrepreneurs. Um, so if some of them are interested in uh, developing a business and they have an idea, a concept to help their communities, then we will enroll them in an incubator for social entrepreneurs. Uh, that we have launched together with the Dubai Chamber of Commerce and the Amity University here in Dubai. So this is again a program that allows them to go through design thinking, through uh, um, uh, the business model Canva, pitching and so on, for them to have at the end of the program uh, um, a document or something and a confidence as well to go back home and uh, start pitching and start uh, really uh, putting into place this initiative or the business they, they want to, 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 to launch. Um, the moment they go back to uh, uh, the home country after the program, then um, Evolving Women facilitate the interview um, because we want them to be able to go back home and, and really have a job and continue to be independent. Um, when, when we talk about uh, um, um, partners and when we talk about uh, um, uh, bringing on board uh, um, uh, other stakeholders, 
uh, we really thought about both private and public sector because one thing we have realized um, throughout um, since we have started is that one uh, a company or uh, uh, one person cannot make the change, right? So cannot really uh, bring everything that these women need. Um, so over the years, we have created a, a, um, a network of partners. Uh, we have not only worked with, we don't only work with governments, but um, we have brought on board the private sector. So one thing that's really important here to, um, to understand is that um, uh, when, when we started, I, I, I was talking to people and uh, one of the things that I was always hearing was how uh, uh, government had to basically uh, put things in place to, to reduce unemployment of women or to, uh, you know, to, to, to improve the education system. But one thing that I really believe in, the one thing I've learned uh, since we started is that the, 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 the government goes to a certain point, right? You know, the government can push a framework, can push the legal uh, uh, framework, can put a policy in place, uh, can, can have an agenda, a mandate. But if you think about the, the, the power of the, the, the private sector, these are the ones they have to get into the market and really make a change. Uh, the private sector in, in numbers really outnumber the, the government office, right? So we, we really put a huge amount of effort in, uh, in uh, bringing our message to the private sector because we want them to really be the pioneer and be really leading and driving what we're trying to do. Um, I, I'm, I'm truly, you know, if the government can do anything, anything they want, you know, they can put the legal framework in place, but unless the private sector comes into market with jobs, it's still quite difficult to reduce unemployment of, uh, of women or unemployment of youth, whatever the cost that might, whatever the cost they're working on um, is. Um, there is um, 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 part of also what, what we do is we, we spend uh, an incredible amount of time trying to uh, um, spread our message and we look for platforms around the world, whether it's a conference, whether it is a, a, a webinar like this one, um, whether it's a networking event, uh, we, we're trying to um, find platforms to social media that allow us to, to spread our message. Because one thing that uh, um, also we, we realize is that people are not really educated about um, the, the, the social issues in developing countries and they, they always think that uh, donating to a charity is the solution, um, is, the, is the quick win or that going to African volunteer for five days solves the issue. So we're really trying to find platforms where we can, uh, we can spread our message, we can educate people that actually a quick intervention of volunteering for two weeks doesn't really solve the problem. Actually, what you're creating is that kind of dependency uh, um, that will uh, um, that will create the never-ending spiral where every year that community will wait for people to go there and volunteer. And what we are trying to do instead is to uh, bring women to a different reality, teach them so that they can go back and be the change. So they don't need to rely on people from outside going there and volunteer for 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 a week or two weeks and train them skills. So this is why we um, you know we 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 have been. Um, uh, inviting and we've been part of uh, so many different conferences worldwide. Um, we, um, we became one of the first uh, micro enterprise with less than 10 employees to be accepted by the UN Global Compact. So we are signatory to the UN Global Compact. We work on SDG 4, 5 and 8. Um, we can talk more about that uh, later if you have any questions on SDGs. And uh, we report to the UN Global Compact on a yearly basis uh, on what we're doing and how we are helping them uh, um, achieve the the UN the uh, the SDGs. Uh, we are also uh, um, we, we were also selected by the Dubai government to represent Dubai on uh, women empowerment and the Change Now conference in France. Uh, we've been invited to several conferences by the UNDP in Turkey to talk about our message and of course there are. Uh, conferences in the UAE uh, we have been part of uh, from the global business uh, uh, sorry uh, global business forum for Africa the Arabian travel market and these are these are conferences where uh, we have been presented as a sustainable tourism initiative for for women um, and then we have of course localized uh, um, platform like uh, uh, conferences in Ghana conferences in Rwanda and so on so this is really, we, we spend a little bit of time about our partners and uh, about platforms we use 
to uh, to share our message because um, it, we wouldn't be where we are today without the support we have had uh, from from all these key players, all these stakeholders. And within uh, within two years of operation, we were able to expand in four different countries. So for us, that was uh, an incredible um, achievement, considering how you know how, how small the company the company was at that time. Um, I'm just seeing some um, messages. I just want to make sure that you're all hearing me. Yeah, okay, great. So I'll, I'll answer your questions uh, in a second. Um, so um, we, um, I have a video that uh, I would like to show. Um, I don't know if you have had time to, um, to look at the website, but uh, I'm gonna play the video so that um, we can talk about it as well. One second. launched Evolving Women in 2017 and uh, it was really a plan for me to continue my mum's uh, legacy that she started in Italy uh, working with uh, a foundation that was supporting uh, young girls in South America. Our program has been designed and structured in a certain way to provide international work experience, uh, education, training and mentoring to unemployed women from developing countries within the hospitality sector. There is no uh, cost for our participants and uh, we work on a partnership model. I really believe it's the right thing to do. Um, you know, we, we're dealing with a very uh, difficult social issue uh, in developing countries. And once you have seen that, once you have met uh, these wonderful ladies, it's very difficult to walk away. Evolving Women has always been my personal plan to build sustainable economies uh, in developing countries through the advancement of women. And this is exactly what drives me. Evolving Women has impacted me in diverse ways. First and foremost, it has given me the opportunity to travel out of the country for the very first time. It has given me the opportunity to work in a diverse company with different people with different nationalities, different backgrounds. And then it has given me also the opportunity to work on myself, to improve on my personality. Apart from the fact that Evolving Women has helped me to bring out the vision of the kind of woman I want to be, it has also enrolled me in a university where I could gain enough academic experience. And it has also impacted in my skills by helping me get a job in the Double Tree by Hilton Business Bay to enhance my skills as a professional. The program is so great and it's helpful and it will, it will move you ahead and it will empower you. It will make you who you are. The program helps me a lot. It makes me who I am now. I couldn't believe I would be like this, but now I'm okay. I'm so grateful for involving with me. The three learnings I would like our participants to take away are number one, uh, really knowing that supporting each other, women to peer is really important. And we want them to learn something, teach that thing to another participant and together go back home and teach other women and men about what they've learned. Uh, number two is that uh, we want them to understand the self-worth. Uh, and number three, we want them to be uh, skilled and uh, therefore being financially independent and being able to go back home and make an impact on their communities. Initially back in Ghana, I wasn't uh, so confident because my finance was not stable, but because of evolving women and the employment I gained, I was able to be paid enough to have my freedom to be able to keep like be on my own. I don't depend on my family for money. I can actually send them some money from what I have gained and I can also buy anything I want for myself. I have a son back home and he was four years before I came to Dubai. I take good care of him because I earned a lot of money from here and I don't go and ask my parents money to receive money back home, but I rather send money home to take good care of him now. And now he's almost six years and I'm proud of that. Squire Pattern Bogs um, support has been uh, priceless to us. Have
So this, this was just uh, really, uh, I wanted you to understand um, and to hear also from, uh, from some of the participants in the program, because of course, when it comes to me, uh, you might be the passion about what I want to do, but uh, uh, it's always good to hear it from uh, the ladies who are actually receiving uh, the benefit and uh, um, of course are part of this journey. Um, I'm just gonna share with you uh, one more slide and then um, I will, I will start answering your questions. Um, so this is um, one of the uh, uh, participants who has also already uh, returned home. Um, so again, um, it wasn't really uh, uh, when we met her, um, uh, Antonetta did not have uh, a lot of skills and uh, she was also a single mother and she was very, very driven. Um, she, um, she met us and uh, she came on our program. Um, again, extremely driven lady, but of course she did not have the right platform to be able to develop her skills. Um, so we enrolled her on the program and uh, she was in Dubai um, working for uh, uh, the retreat, uh, which is part of the Accor group. So you can see her in the second photo here uh, at, the, at the retreat. And that was when she went back to Ghana. So um, again, you know, the, the, you, you can see the transformation and you can see how um, uh, being able to uh, leave your country, being able to see a completely different reality and be trained at individual standards can not only help you in terms of uh, improve your employability in the market, wherever you're from, but it also helps the confidence. It also helps. Uh, the, the, it has a holistic approach, really, right? It helps the confidence, the, the way uh, the way you portray yourself, the way you talk about yourself, and so on. So, um, these are just I just want to to, to finish with um, um, with this slide because I think uh, it's important to understand how that that training and how that development can can impact uh, women at a holistic level. Uh, and I'm talking about women because that's what we, that, that's our audience, that's our mission, but um, that, that, that translates into any other uh, um, uh, target audience, any other uh, demographic, whether it's youth, whether it's uh, senior citizens, you know, any, anyone, anything you're passionate about. I'm just going to start um, answering some of the questions because I'm very conscious of the time. Um, just one second. Um, so, one question is: So, it's Richard, uh, what challenges did you go through in order to set up your organization? Um, that's a very interesting question. So, um, the challenges were many, and uh, I can name you uh, a few. Um, so, one of the challenges we had was, uh, of course, we were trying. Well, I was trying to. Um, um, uh, create a program to, to support uh, women that would, uh, um, a program that was taking place in the UAE, right? And uh, the UAE, of course, is a Muslim country. So the, the, the perception you have of, um, of this country, especially if you have never been here, is that um, because it's a Muslim country, then women cannot progress. So that was a sort of stereotype. It was a bias that we were finding a lot uh, in Africa. Um, so we, we did lots of different research. We did lots of different survey. Uh, we ran lots of different interviews. And whilst I thought that going back, going to Africa and say to, the, to women, you know, I'm going to take you to Dubai and you're going to change your life. I thought that would be sort of very appealing uh, uh, proposition. Actually, I found lots of resistance. And you know they, they were actually not very happy to 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 come to the UAE, so that was a big challenge because I've been been in Dubai for over nine years now, and what I've achieved in the UAE I would have never been able to achieve in my country. I'm originally Italian. Um, you know the the platform and the and the, the the progress as a woman I have been able to achieve over several years in Dubai, it would have taken me double the time in a different country because actually the UAE is a great platform for women. So for me to be able to go to Africa and explain to them, you know, I come from this background and this is what the UAE has allowed me to do was a turning point because I have to be able to show them that actually coming to the UAE was a good thing for them. So one of the challenge was that. So I had to start with educating uh, uh, um, 
paper about the, 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 the UAE. And of course, there are so many different, uh, there, is, there are lots of different uh, misconceptions about what you can do here as a woman and what you can do. Uh, I'm also very well aware of the fact that there are uh, some bad experiences uh, that have gone on in the past. So one way that we, uh, we, we went around that challenge was to put in place uh, a program where you have to uh, uh, receive a contract first and a visa before you were able to come to Dubai. So you don't come here under the Evolving Women Sponsorship where I could potentially uh, put in any jobs I want to, but you come already with a contract from the hotel. So we have to educate people. We have to put a system in place where the ladies would not leave the country before they knew exactly where they were going to work and with the visa, with the contract and everything in place. So that was a huge challenge. So education number one or about you know, the, the UAE of what we wanted to do. Uh, another challenge was the fact that um, of course, in, in, uh, in the UAE, uh, we could not register the company as a not-for-profit, so we have to register it as for-profit, um, um, because there is, a, there is a legislation around the not-for-profit in the region, so that's, uh, that was a big challenge, because, of course, we, we, are, uh, um, we, we have lots of challenges in raising fund, funds, because we, we don't pass vetting process from uh, um, big organizations that want to donate us money because we can't accept donations. So that's another big challenge. And the way we, we, we went around it is to create action, to register for profit, start operating and creating a business model around, around the program so that we do not have to rely on donation from uh, foundations or from organizations. Um, and I think another challenge I'm gonna move on after this one is um, just the, the, the a personal challenge when you start um, you know, I was 31 when, when I wanted to, to begin. So I think it is that, that personal challenge of that, that, that um, uh, um, you know, the self-doubts and um, the fact that it was something very different that we were, that I was trying to do and there was no one I could benchmark myself to. So I never knew whether I was going the right way, <laughs> whether I had to change things because there was no one I could benchmark myself to. Um, so there were that sort of self-doubt and that, 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 that challenge of, uh, believing that actually what I was doing was going in the right direction. And I still have those self doubts, so that's, <laughs> that's, uh, that's ongoing. Um, so I hope I've answered your question. Please let me know if, you, if I can uh, add more details to it. Um, the other one is what percent of the training go back to start businesses in their own country? Can you talk a little bit about the UN company? Yes, so um, at the moment, so we launched our incubator actually um, in January. Um, so the, we have three ladies from Ghana at the moment on, in the incubator. Uh, we have, it was our first pilot. Um, so we started in January and uh, um, towards the end, at the end of this year, they will have their own business plan. They will have their own uh, pitch ready. Uh, of course, not a high level, but they, they are not asking for a, a big amount of money. They're not asking for a million of dollars of investment to start with. So they are a relatively simple uh, um, concept but with the potential to grow into uh, um, social enterprises. So um, the, at the moment, the three ladies who are on the program are all due to go back and, and start their business. Of course, whether that's, that's going to materialize next year, I can't tell you. Uh, but um, uh, for, for now, there is a good, uh, um, uh, I have a good feeling that the three of them can do really well. Uh, their beautiful concept and one thing that we ask them um, uh, when they want to apply for the incubator is that they have to create a concept that gives back to their community so if they want to start a restaurant business then they have to come back to us and tell us how that business is going to help their community so one of them might say um, i want to recruit homeless people so that's how i'm going to give back to the community um, so it has to be uh, there, there needs to be uh, um, uh, giving back to the community element to it. Uh, so if the, the three of them start the business, then we have 100% <laughs> uh, percentage in 100% uh, success rate. Um, in terms of the UN Global Compact, I'm not sure what you would like to know exactly, but we, um, uh, we, we are signatory to the UN Global Compact. So they have 10 principles that we, uh, we, we try to uh, uh, sort of, uh, to, well, we report on. Uh, of course, we are a small organization and that was a big privilege for us to be able to be uh, um, accepted and to be able to even be uh, um, within the network, right? Um, so that was a big privilege. But let me know more what you would like to know about the UN Global Compact, what they are or uh, how we work with them. 
uh, Ruth, uh, how do you choose your trainees? I'm sure you have much more demand than you can take trainees. Absolutely. So that's a very good question. It's a very tough uh, um, process because sometimes we have funds for 20 ladies and we have application from 200 ladies. Um, so the, the general rule, of course, we have a set of criteria in place from uh, the age. So we work with women from the age of 23, 22, 23, up to 38. Um, we are, um, they have to speak at least, there needs to be a level of uh, English spoken and written uh, because they have to be able to live in Dubai and, and be on their own and also interview. Um, they, um, we don't ask for an education certificate, uh, whether you have been able to go to school or not go to school, we, we don't really ask for, for a certificate. If you have it, fine, if it's submitted, if you don't have it, we don't penalize you for that. Um, the general rule is that the moment we see an application and the moment we see the resume, if we believe as, as assessors that the resume can allow you to find a job in Dubai without us, then we will not enroll you in the program or we will not take you to the next stage of the interview process. Because we really want to work with women who wouldn't have a chance to find a job uh, uh, internationally by themselves, right? So if you have a resume that allows you to do that, then you don't need us to, to help you. It's down to you really, you know, if, if it's, um, it's more about you being lazy and not proactive to find a job for yourself. Um, so that's one of the, uh, um, the, the, the one of the criteria that, that we, we look at. But yes, we do have lots of uh, requests um, compared to the amount of funding we have at the moment. Um, the, the, the other way also we choose trainees, we are or, or, um, uh, participants for, for the program, we, uh, we ask them uh, questions uh, during the selection process about how they see themselves going back home and give back to their community. Because one thing that's very important for us, and this is how we measure our social impact, is when they go back home. So for me, the, the, the program is not a relocation program to Dubai, where you move to Dubai, it's a study abroad program for two years with in view of your going back home. So one thing that we focus on, we really ask about the, um, the we, we try to understand, you know, their commitment to give back to their community. Because if we get a feeling that you're taking the program to move to Dubai, then that's not what the program is about. Uh, so we spend um, about, we have about two hours from the interview process uh, uh, where we, that we dedicate to really drill down and understand uh, why you're coming on the program. Um, Wendy, so what criteria do you see to pick, yes, to use to pick the trainee? Uh, do they have a platform to sign up? Yes. Uh, so I think it's a very similar uh, question to Ruth. Um, so um, these are the, the, the criteria. In terms of platform, we, uh, it depends on the country we work in. We don't open for application on our website, or not at the moment, maybe in the future. Uh, the, the first uh, starting point is for us to uh, uh, work with a local partner that usually is a government agency uh, or uh, um, is one of our uh, uh, colleagues, uh, basically uh, is from the country. And what we do, we, we, uh, we establish sort of uh, partnerships with schools, most of the time in rural areas, and we, we access their, their alumni database. Um, so we, we look at uh, um, women who have left school three or four years ago and they're still unemployed. So we work with these women. And the, 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 there isn't a platform as such. We literally give them um, an application form to fill in that they can send to us by email or um, sometimes we we actually, depending on where we are, because many of them have no access to laptop or Wi-Fi, then we will go there, we will go to the school and, uh, um, and we will ask them to fill in the application there and then uh, on paper. Um, of course, the areas we work in are, are not um, uh, areas where there is always Wi-Fi available, there is not technology, so we try to, we, we, we really were very flexible on how this media application sometimes is done face to face on paper if there is no Wi-Fi. Um, uh, how did you get the attention of the UN? <laughs> uh, interesting one. Um, the, I mean, it was a combination of uh, um, factors really. Um, there was, um, you know, the, the, there was number one, uh, um, someone I met who uh, introduced me to, uh, um, 
to the UN. Uh, and uh, it was a very random um, connection, really, that I, I had. Um, but I think the, the, the connection took um, the, uh, how can I say, the, the connection helped to till a certain point, uh, but the, really in, the, the, the real interest from the UN Global Compact uh, came from um, um, the fact that we were, uh, again, a very small organization that went to Ghana and helped them women find the jobs when there were so many organizations in the world putting so much money in this country. And although they were, in they were investing in training and education, there was no, and the employment was not the result of that training. So what they got, sort of the interest came from the fact that we were working on training and education, but then we also had the employability uh, on the top of that. And that, that's a quite unique model because uh, there is so much money going to education. And my, my view on that is, yeah, that's great, right? You know, you can open 10 universities in Accra, 10 universities in Lusaka, anywhere you want. But what's the point to have people with PhD in the street with no jobs? So the, the, the model of uh, skill development, education, but also the employability factor added to it was what was a bit different from all other, what, what other companies were doing. So the, the UN Global Compact were very interested in that type of model. Um, so uh, which are the groups most for this initiative? Oh yes, so um, this is a very nice uh, um, um, topic. So we have a huge, huge amount of support from um, Hilton, from Accor, from Radisson, from um, uh, Ramada. Um, and uh, uh, we have corporate agreements with them. So we have access to all the properties. And despite, you know, this year has been a uh, uh, sort of uh, um, very quiet year because of everything going on. And despite that, you know, they've been very supportive. Um, so we had Hilton um, offering skill development placements to six ladies from Ghana this year. Uh, we have 30 ladies from Rwanda uh, who we're trying to place in, uh, in a core. Uh, so despite, you know, they have already uh, um, uh, participants uh, working in their hotels and throughout COVID they have retained all of them. Um, so that's, they, they, it's a huge support. Um, there is the, uh, not only the support on uh, offering the training to, to the ladies, uh, but also the moral support, as an, as an example, through COVID. They really believe that what we are doing is changing lives. So they have been very supportive in retaining all our, all our participants. Um, of course, you know, we want to bring more hotels on board. Uh, we are looking at, uh, we, are, we are talking to two more groups at the moment. Um, and of course, you know, the more hotels we bring on board, uh, the more we can, uh, um, with the more women we can reach. And we're also looking at uh, um, expanding uh, across sector. Uh, of course, when you look at scalability for a social enterprise, like for any other business, um, we, you can look at scalability geographically, so you enter new countries, but you can also look at scalability across uh, sectors. So we're looking at both. Um, so the, the, the scalability across sector would allow us to um, um, establish partnerships with the other sectors, whether it's logistic, whether it's uh, retail, uh, whether it's uh, um, uh, security, banking, and really of uh, uh, other development to ladies who want to go into a different type of career. Um, so that's something we are we are looking at at the moment. Um, Bino, um, you're from Botswana, have a diploma in child management. So what I want to know um, is how do I keep in touch with you? It's my first time attending your meetings. Let's know about it. Uh, I was referred by Mountain Space in Uganda. Yes, absolutely. So um, of course we have, um, you know, I can leave you my email address. We are on social media uh, and we are in touch with uh, lots of uh, uh, followers and lots of uh, um, supporters through social media, but of course we have the email address. Um, Uganda is actually a, a country we are looking at <laughs> at the moment, fun enough. So uh, by, by, any, by any means, uh, we would love to, to keep in touch with you and of course answer more questions that you might have in the future. Uh, Ruth, what happens to the trainees after the program? That's, uh, that's when they get a job or does the mentorship, mentorship continue. Um, so the, the moment they, uh, they go back home, then we, um, we have an online platform where they do training and mentoring. So the mentoring uh, relationship that um, 
uh, that training will contain even after the program. Um, of course, you will you would be engaged. You would engage with us as an alumni, uh, as a graduate almost of, of the program, and uh, we will have a different type of training in terms of. You know, more into how can you now move from a supervisory level to a management level? How can you become, if, you're, if, you're, if you have your business, you know, how can you now scale your business? So there, there is a more, uh, uh, more advanced training that comes into place once you leave the program. Once you leave the, once you leave the UA, you never leave the program. You can be an alumni for the rest of your life. That's, that's the idea behind it. So no, it does not end. And uh, we... We really, uh, um, we have really spent a lot of time in creating a platform that uh, allows the, and we're still working on it now. Actually, the we are at the beta version, and we're launching it in January. So we we have spent lots of, uh, um, um, you know, money and, and time in creating a platform that would allow the ladies to stay in touch with us and continue that development even when they go back to their country. Um, they are our success stories, and we want them to inspire other women as well to enroll in the program. Um, so, um, oh, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you for your private messages as well. I, I really appreciate. Um, are there any other questions? I know we, we, we still have about 10 minutes, so I'm happy to, uh, to answer more questions, to add more details to what I have, I have said. Um, you know, I think um to to you know a platform like this and i think you know being able to uh, uh to reach uh, students youth and to give them a message on uh, um not only education because it's a personal uh, journey so not only on the importance of uh, of education for yourself but also a message on um, uh, making a change in society one day and perhaps start your own uh, your, your own initiative, your own business. You know, when I started, I never thought uh, this would become a, a, an organization. It was something I wanted to do when I was on holiday and, and just go back to Africa and, and um, through my network, help a, a group of women, and then it became what it is today. So I think this is, you know, this is really a message for you to not only to grow in terms of uh, uh, your personal development, but also, uh, you know, look at what you can do in uh, uh, in your community and what you can do to uplift the lives of other people or maybe environment, you know, if that's what you are into. But way to give back. Uh, I have another question. Um, uh, yes. So as an example for. Um, uh, yes, yeah, so, uh, if we want to enter a new country, so we, we it again depends on uh, um, why we are entering the new country. Sometimes there is an interest, sometimes we are approached by um, someone uh, very influential in a country and says, you know, I've, I've come across your project, uh, how do we implement this in, uh, in Zambia, how do we implement this in, uh, in, in, in Mozambique? So we go through the, the connection, and that's that's a quite easy route to get into a new country. If we want to proactively engage a country, engage a community in a country, because we have been uh, we have been reading something about that community and about uh, um, the struggle women in that community are going through, then we would be the one approaching. Uh, uh, governments. So we would approach the Ministry of Tourism, we would approach the Ministry of Education, the Ministry of Labour, and we would basically present our organisation. Does it work all the time? No, it doesn't work all the time. If it doesn't work, then we're going to find a sort of personal connection to get us to where we want to go. Um, one thing that we found really extremely, extremely helpful in expanding to other countries um, is the uh, Dubai Chamber here because they have incredible influence in Africa. Uh, so we are now exploring um, uh, Ethiopia and that's through the uh, Dubai Chamber office in Ethiopia. So um, we, we go to government first there. If it does work directly, then we will approach people here in Dubai. So the Dubai Chamber is one of the channels we use. They are extremely helpful. They are um, they, they they believe in what we are doing, so they give us uh, they give us constant platforms to um, uh, to to spread our message, um, and also what we do locally here in the UAE, we will speak to the embassy or to the consulate here in the UAE, so that they can make a formal introduction to 
the government in their own country. So that's the approach we have used with Rwanda. So with Rwanda, we spoke to the consul here, the consulate of Rwanda, and uh, they, do, they did a due diligence on our organization. And from there, there was an introduction to the Rwanda Development Board. Uh, in Kigali, and that's how we work now in Rwanda. So these are the channels we, we go through. Um, it's important that we work with governments because, of course, the moment you go into rural areas and you work on the movement of, uh, you know, you, you, you touch, you talk about move, the movement of vulnerable women, there are so many factors you have to take into consideration, and it's very important that government knows, <coughs> excuse me, what the organization <coughs> is doing in, uh, in these communities. Um, Another question. Um, um, <laughs> um, yes, uh, I'm getting private messages on uh, being in touch. Um, I will say I will give you our email address, so you can definitely be in touch with us. Um, <clears throat> Yes, Ruth. Um, so there is one uh, question on, are you ever afraid that uh, women in train get into bad company or treat badly by the company they train with? So um, we, there is always an element of, uh, um, you know, uh, I, would, I would call it, there is always an element of risk, right? But that's a risk you take as a woman or as a man every time you travel. Um, the, the moment you leave your country, the moment you leave your family, you are exposed. You are exposed to other people, you are exposed to other culture. Um, I don't see that as a risk, uh, to be honest with you. I see that as part of your learning curve, right? Uh, being able to lead the, the, the wings of your family and being able to be on your own, whether you're a boy or man, a boy or, or a girl, it's, um, it's a learning curve. Um, we we, 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 you know, we're trying to, we look after, you know, we really care about the well-being of the ladies on our, on our program. And this is why, why we only work with reputable hotels and we only work with organizations that we know have contracts in place. Uh, they are international brands. Uh, they have uh, accommodations. They have transport from and to work. So there is a level of uh, uh, control around how much can go wrong, right? So the room, the, the room for, for something to go wrong becomes smaller and smaller because there is a level of control. We do not work with, we're not a recruitment agency, so we don't work with private households. Uh, we don't work with uh, uh, private clients, but we only work with international uh, brands because we want to, we, we, we really want to uh, um, uh, sort of leverage the experience they already have in managing uh, um, people who come from outside. Um, in terms of um, uh, the company, of course, the moment they're off, um, I'm not there with them 24-7 to see who they go out with, um, uh, where they hang around. I, I'm not with them, right? So the, 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 um, the, the, the day off or the freedom is something we can control. And I think it's important to, to, to understand that they... If we did that, if I knew where they were 24 seven, I, I would violate their human rights. It's not fair, right? It's their privacy, if they're off, they can do whatever they want, right? It's, it's their time off. So there needs to be a balance between, okay, how do we make sure there is minimal risk for them? How do we make sure that there is a high level of well-being for them? But at the same time, there is also a level of privacy. So the, the well-being is by working with practical organization. The level of privacy is by uh, training them and by educating them on what they should do, what they should not do, but then it's their choice. But so far, I mean, touch wood, we, we have had, uh, um, we have not had any, any, any problems, touch wood, uh, but, um, you know, we, we, I think it's, you know, I'm not going to be naive, there might be an issue in the future, but as far as I'm concerned, you know, I can go to bed in the evening thinking that uh, as an organization, we have done our best to, to make sure that that doesn't happen. I hope I've answered all your questions. Um, I'm going to um, I'm going to send you now into um, into the chat. I'm going to type my email address. Uh, please drop me an email if you have any more questions. If you want to be in touch, if you have anyone who is interested in taking our program to a, a different country, I would be very happy to to talk to you. And there we go. And um, yes, I I'm. Um, 
I just want to thank you all of you for listening to me for an hour. <laughs> um, and that's been amazing. Thank you so much, Asia, for this amazing presentation. I hope everyone is okay with it. And I was personally, I was very inspired. And if you want to participate in our future webinars, if you want to know more details about Spango, you can go to our website yes. and we will be referred to our future webinars. Thank you so much to Thank everyone. You and have a good evening. Thank you. Fantastic. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Take care.